coffee. Enough to stave off a headache and put my dreams in place. Coffee to drag my ass out of bed like fresh air and lemonade into one rolling chair after another. Coffee to make enough stress out of nothing to impress somebody that I don't even really like. This coffee swirls my guts and it seems like it should hurt. The cream smooths. The sugar sweetens. The ocean operates on a natural cycle of tides and currents. Minor disturbances splash the surface, but they're absorbed by the mass, and the deeper one goes in the ocean, the calmer things become, with little regard to what's going on above. The ocean does not sleep, and if it did, it probably wouldn't have a time that it had to wake up. There's no horrendous commute, or talk radio barrage, or credit card debt, or unreasonable customers and unappreciative bosses. There's only life and death. The ocean is big, and the deeper you go, the calmer it becomes. I am the opposite, and you are too. We try to look calm on the surface, but inside we are a churning mess. Like the ocean, we are big. Only we are made up of ideas and goals and friends and careers and families with histories that run back hundreds and thousands of years. We go to sleep too late and we wake up too early. Tell your friends and family that you're quitting heroin or cigarettes or alcohol and they'll probably support you. Tell the same folks that you're quitting coffee and they'll look at you sideways. Many pause, turn away, and think for the first 30 seconds or so while they try to figure out if you're crazy. Some start telling you big stories meant to frame up coffee in its rightful place as a lower level substance, not even really a drug. They might tell of how their friend Bill got off speed pills after being addicted to crack cocaine due to being molested as a child, a story meant to make your quest feel mundane. Some people will even become angry, telling you it's your right to drink coffee because it's their right to drink coffee. Besides, they say, I only have one cup in the morning. In essence, some people have never really considered that a person can be addicted to coffee. For the past 17 years, since I was 16, I've drank about four large coffees, a half gallon per day. Keep in mind that my hobbies in high school consisted of skateboarding and doing dorky things with my dorky friends. After a few injuries on my skateboard, I began playing music, reading and writing more. I also began drinking more coffee. Coffee for many addicts is about control. By drinking coffee, I can control my energy level and alertness so that I have more when I need it and less when I don't. As a teacher, coffee let me outspaz the students. As a salesman, I can think faster than my prospects. As a musician, I'm confident that I'll remember the chords and the words and have the brain power to sort it all out. The sense of control comes from caffeine, a basic stimulant. You don't have to watch Scarface a hundred times to understand the connection between stimulants and perceived control. In February 2010, I decided to break up with coffee on Valentine's Day and see if I could make it 21 days. 
I've tried to quit coffee in the past and have never made it past the second day. The first time I was in high school and I was sent home with the flu on day two. I drank a soda and felt fine. The second time was my first year out of college when I read about Ray Jardine, an outdoorsman who gave up coffee to hike the Pacific Crest Trail, which runs from Mexico to Canada. This second time was a disaster. After eating a lunch of avocados, red bell peppers, and sunflower seeds, I was sent home from work on day one with the flu, although this time I knew what it really was. I ate a turkey sandwich and drank a cup of coffee when I got home and felt normal again. Like a bad girlfriend that is great in bed, I could not give it up. Maybe the third time's a charm. Okay, cool. Hi, my name's Wes. I'm a part-time musician and a full-time coffee addict. It's 2010 and I've drank about 64 ounces of coffee per day for 17 years, which is about 12 tons of liquid coffee. I wonder about an actual grounds, but uh, I'd have to do a little conversion for that. So what's the price of coffee? Uh, I've been thinking about this a lot. Nine bucks a pound, three dollars a week for cream. Um, I put some sugar, but not very much. But uh, I guess the, there's another cost, and that's in time. And so I've been thinking about the cost in time. And uh, the first, first cost, I guess, is lack of sleep. And not only do you stay awake too late into the night, but also uh, what I, I was researching this online a little bit, and what I found was that um, you actually wake up in the morning because your caffeine withdrawal starts. And so you'll start getting a headache in the morning, and that's what wakes you up. That's why you wake up craving the coffee, and that's why you can't sleep for a long time ever if you're a coffee addict, even if you didn't drink coffee before you went to bed. In fact, you may want to drink coffee in the afternoon so that you can sleep long enough uh, for some people. So um, an another cost is, I guess, the time of making it, and I do that all the time. Uh, it's a, a good tool for procrastinating, for, uh, you know, just make some coffee and think about it. So that's kind of, kind of the main cost of coffee, I guess. My dad bought me this magazine a subscription called Success Magazine, so I'd be more focused on success. Uh, there's a CD that comes, so I've been listening to the CD, it makes me feel better. And so they recommended that I take this eight-week course called Designing the Best 10 Years of Your Life because it's 2010 and all, you know, I have 10 years of regret since the millennium. And so now I'm trying to make things better by 2020. And so part of it, I had to ask three people what my best qualities were, what my worst quality um, is, and also what my, uh, what quality they see in me that could potentially make me sabotage myself in the future. And it, and it came down to the three people said the same thing that would make me sabotage myself in the future. And that is a lack of focus. That I have so many ideas at once that I end up picking none of them and always wondering if I should have done one of the other ones so I'm never content doing the one that I'm doing. And um, the cure for that I've read is meditation that helps you focus. So I'm hopefully going to start meditating soon, but it's difficult to meditate when you're uh, all coffeeed up. Well, this is it. This is my last cup of coffee for 21 days. I'm about to head down to the cliffs and break the news. So let's go. No more mochas, lattes, frappuccinos, cortados, hammerheads. French presses, melitas, drips, percolators, free coffee at the bank. That yeah, coffee, you're sweet. Well, this is it. It's been a long time. 17 years of drinking four, five, six of these babies a day. And uh, this particular cup of coffee with the smiley face is my last cup. The fact that we're filming this, I guess, makes it seem uh, kind of like it's not really happening. But the fact is, is that tomorrow's gonna probably be 
a big pain in the rear. And uh, I got a lot to do tomorrow. I have uh, work. I teach in the morning. This is it. Last cup of coffee. It's pretty good. It's not sweet enough for my liking, but look what it did to my tongue. It's 7.15 in the morning. There's a plane passing over my head. It's my first day uh, without coffee. Normally I get up at about 5.45 in the morning and start drinking, you know, probably a whole pot of coffee. I fill it up to about the 6 or the 8 and just start drinking that and getting things done at about 5.45 in the morning or so. But today was a very late start. Um, couldn't really get motivated to get out of bed. I kept waking up in the middle of the night, uh, panicked that I wasn't gonna have coffee in the morning. And so now my plan is to come out and exercise first thing, so that way I don't I don't uh, stress out too much about the no caffeine and just kickstart my metabolism. So thought today I'll just take a walk. Um, I was going to go surfing. There's actually some mac and waves this morning, but I overslept for that also. Ooh, look at these ducks. Check this out. See, they don't need coffee. What kind of animal needs a cup of coffee in the morning? Not a duck. Alright, it's about 8.40. I'm 10 minutes behind schedule, but on my way to do some teaching. It's not so much that I'm uh, worried that I won't be able to do the job or something like that. It's just that the normal feeling of excitement that I have of the warmth in my soul, my caffeinated soul, it's just not there. I have a little low-lying headache. You know, I went to bed and took Advil last night. I have some Advil with me today. But um, right now it's just kind of this low-level headache general feeling of doom you know nothing too major but I'm gonna try to listen to some positive positive uh, messages here on my CDs in the morning maybe that'll help get me amped up and uh, then we'll go from there all right 129 holy moly it's hard to work when you don't drink coffee the headache started I definitely don't feel as alert but I feel more relaxed. So in other words, I can't get as many things done, but I really don't care as much. Survive some work, and I'm gonna have some lemonade. It's good. Tastes better than coffee. Ah, it's cold, it cools my head down. Lemonade. All right, we found something we can use. Well, you're welcome. This is my, my office. It's little and compact. Do tutoring and other educational things. I teach music and um, yeah. This is Ralph, the three fish. And yeah, it's my stereo system. And that's out in Asheville, North Carolina um, while I was doing some music out there, recording my last little CD. Uh, this is what, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, one that I took at uh, Posto Nove. Some pictures of rock climbing out in Owens River Gorge. And uh, this is probably the nastiest one. This is a, uh, was a guitar slide that was the top of a Cavassier bottle. And it fell off a table and shattered on the ground. And I thought I had picked up all the pieces, but I forgot one. And... Um, yeah, stepped on that puppy and uh, passed out immediately and woke up on the ground with a bloody foot and no stitches, but a great picture. Baby, it's a boss kill to think that you're leaving me. I dream of the day when I don't need you. Oh, sugar in the afternoon, you ain't as sweet as you were. My head is pounding. 
Just like a drunk without a cup But what I need Is to come down off this hill My tears on auto drip It's such a total buzz kill The next 20 days I'm definitely looking forward to I'm looking forward to having more free time and being healthier and not having that coffee taste in my mouth and not having a brown tongue. I think it's going to be like a huge, huge pain in the ass to deal with me when I'm not uh, drinking coffee. I hope I can somehow make that better for people. But, um, you know, already today it came up multiple times when I was driving my car or working, uh, you know, with students or, or um, even just talking about, even about filming this, I keep just thinking like, what, what the hell am I doing? Like, what am I doing today? What am I doing with my time? What am I doing in general? Do I have enough energy to finish all these things that I've started? I feel hopeful though. That's the word, I guess. I feel hopeful. I also feel like I really like the stuff. I feel, I feel like I'm going to miss this huge part of this connection in the morning with pretty much every other thing except for ducks and other birds that don't drink coffee, who are the only thing I've found so far that that's up uh, without drinking coffee at that hour. You know, 600 milligrams of Advil twice, and I still have a headache, and I still have back pain. I've drank about a liter of water and some lemonade. I had some Gatorade uh, with Tiger Woods on the front. My other thought is that this, this is one of the easier days. I'm not looking forward to day three or day four. I can just foresee me almost forgetting that, uh, that I even quit coffee and winding up in some situations where I just I want to have a cup of coffee and then being smacked in the face with the harsh reality that I can't have the sweet, sweet beverage. So that's my thought. Wish me luck. Cool, so I'm going to put the coffee maker up in the closet. I'll put it way up top. And last but not least, the ceremonial sugar shaker. Sentimental, restaurant style. I live by myself, so. All right, not until March 7th, 21 days. <laughs> All right, I've had a headache for about 12 hours now. Been off coffee for a good 30 something hours and making some eggs and potatoes, carrots and zucchinis, egg whites, keeping healthy. I'm gonna go for a walk around sunset. Alright, to be honest, <coughs> right now I feel like shit. It's about 6 o'clock. I'm thinking about taking a nap soon. I'm trying to get some work done. Who knows if that has anything to do with coffee, but it'd be easier if I were more awake. Good night. Woke up today feeling quite a bit of anxiety about um, all kinds of stuff. Yep, no coffee today. Today's my second full day without coffee. It's beautiful outside. Looking forward to maybe getting some waves. To be honest, my uh, I've been sort of irked at a bunch of a bunch of things that are really out of my control. Did a little chemistry tutoring in the afternoon, and the headache started kicking into overdrive around two o'clock. So uh, came out to the beach to surf again, but um, headaches kind of bad. So I'm just laying here on the sand, did some yoga. I'm gonna take a little nap and maybe catch a sunset session. Today I actually feel all right. I woke up really early, about 5.30. I went to bed at 8 last night. Woke up early and um, realized that I wasn't gonna be drinking coffee and kinda got pretty bummy within about 15 minutes of waking up. I couldn't go back to sleep. So now I'm gonna eat some food. Uh, I've been getting a lot of things done this morning. I moved all those things over there. Definitely have had coffee on my mind today. My up and down cycle is pretty its pretty human, I guess you would say, meaning that I get tired and I go to sleep, and I don't get tired and then um, 
you know, feel like I should drink coffee and keep getting work done at the expense of my own sanity, which is what I did for the last uh, last while, what, 17 years, I guess we figured out. So normally if I were this early, I would go to 7-Eleven and I would get a coffee and sit in my car and drink part of it and think about what I'm going to do uh, for the day and teaching. But today I guess I'll just sit and um, I brought some things with me. I brought soy milk and uh, water. Alright, so I just had my uh, dentist appointment. He said I, my whiteness is an A1 on the Vita scale. He said it could move up to a B1. Um, he also said that the bottom teeth tend to stain worse because that's where the coffee sits. And the receptionist let me know, um, and the x-ray person let me know that um, the tea is actually worse because I think of the tannins in staining your teeth. So I've got some information. My teeth aren't too bad though. All right. If you notice, it's not the normal sunny San Diego day. It's a little overcast. Uh, we were noticing that the flags were blowing. Um, south winds, you know, were showing on the flags, which isn't isn't normal. So surf's a little sloppy today, but it, it's really kind of mellow and quiet compared to how it usually is. It's a Friday evening right now. It's kind of happy hour time. So, and I'm feeling, you know, I'm feeling equally as as calm. So. Um, I'm definitely at a loss of things to say quite often these days, I guess. It might be from not having coffee. I've had um, a lot more fun in my uh, job of teaching, working with kids. It's been a lot, um, you know, it's been a lot more, more of a human kind of face-to-face -face experience. Uh, my agenda comes second to, the, uh, to their experience as my students. I've noticed that kind of happening. So in, in general, I'm really glad that I don't drink coffee. I think it might be the key to my success over the next few years. I honestly do. And it's kind of kind of strange. So if making this documentary turns out to to do that then for me, then that, that's great. So It's orange star fruit caffeine free. In fact, there's a whole other world of uh, flavors when you don't drink coffee, you'd be surprised. Like yesterday I had um, hot apple cider on the pier, so it was cold. Yeah. And I, and I said, do you have anything besides coffee? Mm-hmm. She said, hot apple cider. Does caffeine free tea wake you up? Uh, it energizes me. It makes me, feel, makes me feel good. I like the flavor. It doesn't really wake me up, but it makes me more present. You seem really peaceful, yeah. <laughs> You're very calm compared to uh, how you used to be. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> I was actually thinking it might have been the best thing that I ever did, just wow. to quit coffee. Though I've, uh, I've been late for lots of meetings and appointments. I was late this morning. I woke up late. But I... It's not that I don't care, it's just I'm okay with it. I broke up with caffeine one week ago. Today is day seven and I feel pretty good. I woke up today and sliced a pineapple in half and juiced it. And then I juiced uh, some carrots and some apples and felt pretty good. Yeah, managed to crack out on my computer for about five hours, even without coffee. So I definitely um, miss the bean, you know. I miss the coffee, and I think about it a lot. I keep thinking, oh, I'll just have a cup of coffee before I go do this or that, but um, I just don't have it. So 
So I'm gonna head on in here to the co-op and uh, buy some beets and some other fruits and vegetables to make some more juice. The juice is loose. Nothing much. Oh. Good. Two cups in the morning, one cup on my drive, one cup at the factory. Keep my productivity high. What I don't need is to come down off this hill. All my tears on auto drip is such a total buzzkill. Is there a pill? So I don't feel that you're leaving me. All right, it is day nine without coffee, and I'm here at Sunset Cliffs with my Starbucks tall vanilla ruibus soy tea herbal latte. And it's really good, it's really sweet, but tasty. And a pretty good replacement for the coffee, I'd have to say. I feel, feel great today, actually. I woke, probably because the surf is good, uh, because I woke up after only sleeping for three and a half hours or so, and I was super tired this morning and really wanted some coffee. Wasn't uh, too excited about getting up and, uh, and facing the world, but the wind was favorable and it looks like the waves could get better as the tide drops, so um, we're out here gonna get some surf. And if you're curious, that's what kind of tea bag we're talking about at Starbucks. It's more of a sophisticated tea bag. It's not your average tea bag that you might get off the streets. Sometimes, but um, 
the middle of the week in San Diego, uh, napping usually isn't part of the schedule. So it was really cool. It kind of like made me feel like a little kid again, actually, to take a nap. In terms of a movie, I guess, kind of worried because there's no conflict in our movie yet at all. I'm drinking some carrot apple juice right now. It is my replacement for coffee. I got a, I had a headache uh, this afternoon for some reason. I'm not sure if it's because of coffee or not, but um, I decided to make some carrot apple juice because we're about to head down to the farmer's market and talk to some people on the street. So that's the plan today. Hopefully I can get a little kind of fruit rush from this. Buzzkill. All right, let's go to the market. Okay, cool. So how long have you been uh, drinking coffee? Um, I take phases where I'm off, but I probably take drinking it every day for the last few years. Okay. Yeah. And um, have you ever quit? Like, tried to quit quit? Yeah. My caffeine is swimming, working out, anything active. Being active, you don't need that caffeine. Caffeine's just you know, a bonus on top of that, but you definitely shouldn't depend on that stuff. What do you, what's your morning ritual? Do you have a morning ritual? Morning sort of? ritual, yeah, I wake up and um, just be glad to be alive, the first one. Right. Kind of do some meditation, kind of get grounded and centered again, yep. you know? And then do some exercises. Uh -huh. Exercise is really important. You have this wonderful balanced energy instead of this like up and down, you know, from the coffee, caffeine, sugar, and everything like that. My name's Spirit. Um, I enjoy this beautiful world. It's a blessing to be here. I, I feel amazed and in every moment I'm awakening more and more, realizing our true potentials in every moment. So be here with me now as always. Thank you. Do you think that you could if someone, someone for some reason you had to stop do you think that? Yeah, I definitely could. I like the flavor too much and I like how it makes me feel. Yep, all right, cool. But I could stop if I wanted to. Without coffee, I think uh, the world would probably stand still and I'm not ready for that. Woo! It's day 13 without coffee and um, I feel all right still. I've had some, some kind of ups and downs in terms of uh, uh, I guess, I don't know if you'd call it anxiety or just kind of worrying about stuff too much. Every once in a while that happens, but I think that comes from uh, me being too tired and not really taking a nap. Um, whereas before I would just get all coffeeed up and kind of power through it. Now I have to suffer through the, that tired zone of when you need to get stuff done, but you don't really feel like it. So um, it's weird how taking away um, coffee, the focusing drink, um, is making me focus more. Hmm. It is dumping right here in this part of town. Unheard of for San Diego. Tsunami warning today. My peppermint tea latte was pretty good, but it's, it's not quite the same, so I'm uh, smelling the cameraman here. It has some coffee, and uh, it's actually starting to kind of piss me off because I wanted some, but... Uh, I have mint milk instead, so. Um, one of the main differences I find between tea and coffee is um, tea has an amino acid in it called theanine, L-theanine, and this actually acts as uh, a substance which relaxes the nervous system. While you're drinking tea, you're getting the energizing effects of caffeine, yet you're also getting the calming effects from the theanine. Um, I've often felt after long tea sessions that um, I have this energy where I would be able, if I needed to, jump straight through the next wall. But there's also this, this component of, but I don't need to. To me, one of the most important things is, you know, if you want to use coffee as a means to slow down, and, and stop and enjoy some time with a friend, then, then it can be that. Um, if you want to use tea as a way to get your energy first thing in the morning, slam it down, head out the door and off to work, it can be that. So the spirit of a thing is just as important as the thing itself. 
Um, I guess the, the reason I came in first was to find out, um, originally, was just to find out I surf and I'm in the sun a lot anyway. Mm -hmm. And I have, I used to live with an esthetician and she would always tell me that I needed to get a peel because my skin was bad. And I was wondering, is this because I drank too much coffee in part? Well, in part, definitely in part, the sun is also a, a big contributor and the salt water as well. But coffee, the caffeine in it itself is very dehydrating. Um, it's actually an astringent, so it actually pulls water out of your cells. So although it gives you a little bit of extra pep and energy, it's very dehydrating for the whole system. It really affects nearly every organ in your entire body, from your brain, affecting your brain waves, it affects your heart. As you were saying earlier, I think about having kind of an arrhythmia or a palpation in your heart, a nervousness. Yeah. Uh, it can really affect your heart, affects your digestive system, your pancreas, your liver, your kidneys, right down to, uh, as you said, your skin as well. We are on our way to Can of Pork Studios, right outside of Ocean Beach. Whoa. <laughs> We're going to meet up with JT. He's going to re <laughs> record some tracks for the Buzzkill theme song. Buzzkill, the song. Is there a pill so I don't feel that you're leaving me with an empty fill? I woke up today very, very sluggish. Um, day 14 was full of activities. Day 13 was... Um, actually just full of a lot of disappointments and uh, the last couple of days together were pretty stressful um, for me especially without coffee and uh, w when I woke up I went for a walk for 10 minutes first thing in the morning I saw about eight different kinds of birds I saw a couple joggers saw some surfers the waves are pretty big today probably about um, seven or eight feet it looks like and um, two girls said hi to me and all that together cost me no money so I gotta get out of here, I'm late for work, as usual. Only now do I understand true wealth, and none of it appears on a balance sheet. Alright, I just got out of Dr. Fleming's office, and he numbed the right side of my face and fixed a bunch of cavities. According to them, my cavities aren't really from the coffee. Maybe from the sugar in the coffee, but probably from years and years of um, bad tooth care. So, coffee, not so bad. Face? Very, very numb. There's road rage going on across the street. Let's watch the road rage. There it is. There's a road rager. A white car. Oh. It's ready to go. Ah, flower juice. We're going to visit with Bird Rock Coffee Roasters today. I'm feeling good. I'm starting to get into the no coffee routine. I actually didn't really fiend for it uh, too bad today. Mostly I wanted to drink coffee to be nice to the people at Bird Rock Coffee Roasters because they make probably really good coffee and I'm not going to be able to drink it. So that's, that's, I have this social pressure right now to drink coffee. And I think they might make fun of me because of my girly flower water. It's cute, huh? It is. Yeah. Get a little uh, biscotti for you, too. I started uh, roasting in 2002 and uh, started as a hobby. I used to teach at Grossmont College and San Diego City College. And uh, the hobby kind of took over, and here we are. Um, 2010, this is the fourth, uh, we're on the fourth year of this particular location. We specialize in uh, socially responsible coffee and, and good quality coffee. And what that means is really buying coffee that's been responsibly grown. You know, 95% of the coffee grown in the world is grown in third world countries. 
and these farmers are seriously underpaid for the work that goes into what they do. And um, we're all about not only informing the public of how hard this work is, um, but informing them how underpaid these people are and how impoverished they are. Um, so we'll be involved in anything from supplying heavy-duty bicycles for crop transportation to Rwanda to um, promoting women's uh, cervical cancer information in Bali to um, supplying water filtration systems in Colombia. So we, uh, we try to get our fingers in anything we can to give back here. And so we do quite a few source trips now to, to origin countries and work with farmers directly to you know, agree to buy their coffee and um, try and pay them way over what they would get paid via um, fair trade or, or anywhere else. They didn't know what to do with me because I couldn't drink coffee. So we ended up, we settled on a chamomile, chamomile, chamomile tea um, latte, which was really good with some honey in it. I still don't know what the conclusion is about coffee. I guess there's nothing about coffee. It's really about the person. So. Last night I went to the gym and I took Dr. Andrea's advice and I went to the gym last night, got some exercise, came home and couldn't sleep so I did a little bit more exercise and um, actually ate quite a bit before I went to bed and kind of gave myself a little food rush and still managed to fall asleep pretty good. Some soy milk. Hot, hot soy milk. Well, here we are. We're in the bathroom. It's morning and um, I can assure you that that process doesn't require coffee. But um, if you're curious, a little exercise, a little bit of food in the morning, and um, kind of any drink seems to do it. And um, yeah, you'll be dumping in no time, really. So um, get out of the bathroom. It is day 1.7 times 10 to the first power otherwise known as Day 17. We're here in Pacific Beach at the boardwalk, and we're gonna talk to some hunks and some babes about coffee. Do you drink coffee? Not really, I drink energy drinks. You do? Yeah. Like uh, what kind? Monster, Rockstar, Amp, anything. Really. To, um, do you drink it in the morning usually, or? Yeah, usually in the morning, before class. Is that okay? Yeah. And do you drink coffee while you're here? Yes. yes. You do? Yes. Why? What, that, what if we just go follow the metal detector guy? <laughs> and just like ball. See him? He's right there. He's cruising the beach. Hello. How are you doing? And then, uh, but typically, do you find something every day or? Oh yeah, I always find change. Frank, I'm Wes, and uh, we're, like I said before, we're making a documentary about coffee. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess, do you drink coffee? Very rarely, but I do use caffeine. I take it in the form of uh, half a no-dose, or equivalent, in the morning, and another half at noon. Mm -hmm. Keeps me happy. If people would realize that caffeine's a I mean, powerful it. drug and treat it like a drug, it'd probably be a good thing. You know, it's like something that I, I crave in the morning. Just to just to get you know get going. I notice it when I don't have it.
two more days to go and I will have completed 21 days without coffee. It's, uh, it's crazy to think back and especially to look back and um, number one the things that I was saying about coffee and uh, what I thought that it was doing and also how much I was uh, really kind of afraid to quit. <laughs> I just don't want to go through this again. I can I can see how um, once is enough having to you know make myself sick um, in order to stop buying a drink. But you know that's just for me, I guess. So all right, woo! You know what time it is. Alright, it is the night of day 19. It is night 19. Not too eventful for a Friday night. But I'm about to head out. It's 12.20 right now. Um, I've been up since about 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm not, you know, I'm pretty tired, but I'm not that, not that tired for not having coffee. So, um, I'm going to go uh, have a beer with a friend and see what's happening on this 19th day without coffee. It's day 21 and I made it you haters. I haven't had any coffee in 21 days and I feel great. I'm realizing that I don't have you know all the time in the world and it's not worth it to sacrifice my my health and my sleep so that I can um, supposedly get more done so and also realizing that even even when I die I'm still gonna have a to-do list that's not finished so there's no sense really rushing to get everything done uh, there's no sense having a really high heart rate I don't need one um, I'm sure it feels good to be coffeeed up and everything but um, the way that I was using it, it was just just stupid. So I'm feeling a lot better now. And here, let's head over here to the kitchen. That is my new and improved daily meal plan. There's my old one. It's all right. This is my new one right here. Real nice. All this extra time that I've had uh, not making coffee, I've had a little bit extra money. Now I really have spent spent a lot more time listening, a lot more time sitting quietly and just kind of watching people and um, been a lot more content in my own skin and uh, a lot more content uh, with my own projects and um, I'm one of those people that doesn't really like to sleep and um, you know when I go to bed at night I'd rather be up practicing my guitar or out at a show or uh, hanging with some of my friends uh, in the morning, once the sun comes up, I want to check the surf and, you know, see what's happening at the beach. Um, you know, even check my email, whatever. I want to get up. In the afternoon, when it's time to take a nap, I'm, you know, conscious that the sun is going away and that, uh, that I need to get outside and see the last part of the day. So I'm um, just one of those people that never really like to, to sleep very much. And as I have come to find out, I actually love to sleep. And um, it's just society and coffee and unrealistic expectations of, of what I want to get done in a day that uh, make me feel like sleeping is a bad idea. But in reality, sleeping is the shiznit. And um, dreams are cool. Uh, waking up rested is awesome. Drinking water in the morning is, is good for you. And letting your body wake up gradually is also, I think, really important. I mean, if you could wake up every day without an alarm clock and let your body wake up gradually, um, I think that in itself would add, add so much health to people's lives. But um, that's impractical for a lot of people. But um, your body works. If you go to bed early enough, you'll wake up naturally without an alarm clock if, you're, if you set your, your life up correctly. I'm not a life coach, though. I just am a, am a 
recovering coffee addict. So, peace. 21 days later, I made it. It's day 21. The perfect time for a tea bag. It's day 21. Thank you, Proctor Silex. Thank you, Jack Lane. I think I just want a peppermint tea in this cup. Yes, this dirty cup. It's old, it's 21 days old. So I've now ordered a peppermint tea in the same cup, which I quit coffee drinking from. Oh, I actually, I do need a new lid. Yeah, this lid's cracked. I have my own uh, smiley face, though. Tomorrow, maybe coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep, you too. Enjoy the rain. Just made it home from the store on my bike with an obscene amount of weight of groceries. Probably about 40 pounds of groceries on that puppy. So it's kind of a metaphor for life. About 1.45 in the morning, nobody likes mildewy underwear. It's 5.40 in the morning on day 22. And I'm going to go do a little interviewing before work. I'm tired. I sure do have to get some money together here for... Ooh. French Polynesia. If I were already on coffee, I would just leave all these coins here and I'd run out the door in a hurry because I also have to work today. But my time without coffee has taught me that when you do something, you might as well just finish it. Because otherwise you have to do it later. Addicts with Candles. We have a class called Addicts with Candles. I used to be addicted to heroin, but now I can't get off candles. Today is my 22nd day. I survived 21 days of no coffee, and um, in fact, I slept only three or four hours last night. Uh, because I was just awake, uh, went with, uh, actually with this guy, went and got a beverage last night, and uh, he went to New York, and so we were talking about his trip, so, and, but I think I'm actually going to get a coffee and see what happens. Oh, wow. Holy shit. That's good. I haven't had this for three weeks. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, it's really good. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I thought that it wouldn't be. I thought that it wouldn't be this exciting, but it is. Oh crap. Thoroughly amped up. That much coffee down. And I, am, I feel like I've had three cups of coffee, I swear. Really? Yeah. Mm. How's that coffee? Uh, it's, actually, it's all right. I'm just, I'm just grabbing it like it's always been there. But now it's getting a little bit cooler, and um, I'm feeling a little bit jittery. So... Um, but we'll just keep drinking it and see what happens, I guess. I don't want to be addicted to it, you know, and I don't want to, to, to have to have it to go to work and to be happy and to be productive, and I don't want to have that crash in the afternoon. But there has to be a, a happy medium somewhere. Uh, coffee is neither good nor bad. Only people are good or bad. And most of them are all right. So. 
Today when I woke up, I didn't have any coffee at all. I did my, my normal thing. I rode my bike this morning, and at about 11 o'clock, I had to go to uh, the studio to do some recording. So I had some uh, white tea at 11. It feels good also that I tried coffee and re-rejected it. So it's like I ejected it. No, that would be unrejected it. I re-rejected it. I rejected coffee again. This time, not because I was filming it, because I chose to. And so I guess that's what really counts. We are a bunch of addicts. We're a nation of addictive personalities. And what we're addicted to is a false sense of control that we achieve by having these habits and rituals that we do over and over and over every day. If you want to change that, I suppose, that you have to force yourself to get into a different groove, you know, and make sure that, number one, you're in a groove, not in a rut. And number two is that you're, you're conscious about what you're, what you're doing every day and the direction that you're going. And you're not just doing what you did yesterday because you did it yesterday. And so that's the main thing that I've learned. And um, I guess I'll have a cup of coffee whenever the hell I want to have a cup of coffee. But if the cup of coffee is having me, that's when there's a problem. All right, here we go. Hey, Adriana, how much coffee have you had today? I have had about three cups with two more to go. And it is, what time is it right now? It's nearly eight o'clock, probably. So that says something about my daily life and how long my days last. Well, baby, it's a buzzkill To think that you're leaving me I dream of the day When I don't need you Or sugar in the afternoon Ain't as sweet as it was My head is pounding Just like a drunk without a cup What I don't need Is to come down off this hill Or oh, my tears on auto trip It's such a total buzzkill Can I get a warm up on this jill? Oh, two cups in the morning, one cup on my drive, two cups at the factory to keep my productivity high. What I don't need is to come down off this hill, or my tears on auto trip. It's such a total buzzkill. Productivity high What I don't need Is to come down off this hill With my tears on auto trip It's such a total buzzkill I don't need Is to come down off this hill With my tears on auto trip It's such a total buzzkill Pounding, it's a total buzz. 